So I often ask the doll questions, which is like, what is scripting? So here's two answers. Um, I should have asked you the question first, but does anyone have uh, another way of thinking about scripting? I just said you were going to talk, but okay, right. Well, if you call me, I'll talk. Okay. Isn't scripting like encoding business rules into a knowledge okay. layer? Who agrees with who? Who agrees with Rick on that one? I think in some cases, yes. Yeah, in some, some cases. cases. Some so cases. it's a holder of business rules. Okay, I'll buy that. John. Stored procedures. Stored procedures, which is kind of database talk to me. What does that mean? It might include uh, queries. Okay. It might include reports of business rules or manipulating data or interface to extract information like a report. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of activity. activity so you absolutely. have tasks of things that you want to get done. Okay, cool. So kind of the same kind of thing. It's um, headed towards that way. Ray, you had a, a different slant on it, which is there's more than just a task. You have an intent that's encoded in the script. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are your scripts reusable yeah. by multiple processes? Good point. Good point. Hang on to that. We're going to talk about that. Uh, anyone else have anything you want to say about what they... Or how do you use scripting? Michael, I was actually going to add on to what Ray said, is that if if it's designed properly, a script can be like a reusable module that you can plug in anywhere you need. And yeah. basically, if it's designed properly, you, you feed it inputs, it does something, and then it can spit something out. But you're using it as a tool, as a, tool. As a separate tool. So not only can it help you get things done, but it's something that you can craft and design yourself and make it reusable to your... It can be like, it can be like a utility function. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I'll buy that. Uh, anybody want to take a crack on what I'm talking about on the uh, second one? It's not totally tongue-in-cheek. I, I genuinely feel this way. Scripting. It's the one-two punch in FileMaker. With scripting and the calculation engine, you can accomplish just about everything, anything in FileMaker, right? This is, where do you spend the bulk of your time in FileMaker? I, I should, I'd love to study that sometime, figure out how, what percentage of time I spend there versus layout design versus schema, you know, those, those areas, calculation engine, but that's it. About a third. About a third in scripting. Perfect. So uh, it's not as, well, what's interesting, and in fact, Ray kind of uh, stimulated a thought there about what it used to be is with everything that we had to do, we had to do in scripting and account engine. In FileMaker 9 and 10, actually even 8.5 to a bit, more and more that's, that's getting pushed out to the presentation layer, to layout modes, things that you can do like you know conditional formatting now, things that we had to do before in uh, calcs and sometimes scripting. So that's enough for that slide. Uh, I've got my own set of buzzwords. These are ones that you might uh, identify with or have personal uh, fear when looking upon such words. Uh, but I think they really encapsulate everything. So if I were to do a um, like a feature benefit kind of thing, these would be the features. These are the benefits. Yeah, I'm, or even maybe the other way around as well. Um, workflow automation, what does that mean? <laughs> Taking take a, a repetitive manual task and getting the machine to do it. Okay. And repetitive meaning that something you do or something else? Yeah, something that's done over and over that doesn't necessarily involve a lot of brain power, just that it's just repetitive. Oh, I see. So only stupid tasks. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying commonly it's something that that once you learn how to do it once, you don't have to rethink it every time you do it. You just do it. Right. And actually, I took a swing at you there, but it's um, it'd be nice <laughs> if I could codify the non-stupid tasks and actually have those driven further and further up the automatic type thing. But you know, like month-end reports or something. Now, how many brain cells do I want to waste on, oh yeah, I have to go through these 16 steps to make sure I do it consistently to get the same data yeah, so I have my month-to-month -month things. Well, I mean, it's also true. I remember, this is very short, I used to live near an airport, and and after a while, your brain just, and your nervous system just tunes out the noise. Yeah. I remember the first time that I slept away from home, and 
And what I noticed was not the noise, but the lack of noise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I right. think that when you do a repetitive task, even if it's data entry, you start tuning things out because they, they get so repetitious okay. that, that your whole nervous system kind of just becomes used to it. And so you start missing things. So let's change this to the scripting shall set you free. <laughs> okay. I like that one better anyway. Yeah. Um, flexibility, what I uh, kind of alluded to before with the calc engine. But here's a, how many script steps do we have? Anybody take a while, I guess? Uh, 192. Not quite that many. Were you saying that specific? Actually, they're on one of my slides. 192? There's that many? I have to look at the slides. I haven't counted them, actually. But um, uh, yeah, there's probably a hundred and a half, I'd say, at least. <laughs> if anybody wants to go through and look. But how many different ways can those go together? Infinite. Yeah. Okay. It's a factorial a lot. So, <laughs> flexibility, but why why do I have user interaction up there? Well, because you, you, you encode the script into a button or a, yeah. anything on the interface, and the user doesn't even know what's happening, but it yeah. does the work for them. But sometimes they need user input. Oh, right. sorry, did you just say that? They need oh, answer <laughs> input at some yeah. points during the during the scripting. Yeah, so you just talked about two different script steps. Yeah. That there's one script step, custom dialogue. Yeah. That allows you to query to present the dialogue to the user, hey, what do you want to do now? Here are some options, or type one in and and all those other logic flows. So there's so much that you can do. Preaching to the choir, right? Okay, so let me just keep on. Um, this is more the, the Darth Vader approach, right? Mm -hmm. Control. Here's things that I want to make sure you can or can't do. We can do those under script control as well. Uh, consistency. I must have been channeling Ray when I put this one together. So consistency is the other, and it's not by accident that it's catch all. Um, and that's repeatability of tasks, again. Uh, but also just how you frame your uh, experience. So you start putting these together, and it you, know, you realize that you are, all of you are software developers. You know, down the bottom line, very, even though I don't know how many of you know C or Java or anything like that, but you're designing the user experience. You're responsible for what's going on with that program. That's software development. And then efficiency is a real key one. So if you want to look at the bottom line, you know, modularity, exactly what Michael and you guys were saying before. So here's the scary, here's the big scary slide. Uh, set expectations. <clears throat> uh, I have 75 minutes. I have 38 minutes now. How far in, is that? Is that still my? You still have the same amount of time. Oh, I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll move something else for you. Let me do this then. Um, I'll can try to compact some of that. So uh, it is 20 after. Let's say at. So I'm going to target 45 minutes to have all this and the exercises done, and then we'll have, that'll leave time for about a 10 minute Q&A at the end. And we'll nail it down on that. So here's the pieces that we're gonna be talking about through some examples, and I'm gonna come back to this slide from time to time, but basically examples and, and exercises. What I'd like to do is go ahead and just get in, come back to the slide and talk about each one. Uh, but first, actually, before I do, um, which of these is most, just, Shout it out. Which of these are most interesting to you? Triggers. Triggers, triggers okay. Time yeah. text, that's two. So uh, Andy LaCase is actually going to be talking about triggers this afternoon. So I'm Context. deliberately Window consciously going light. Window. I'm sorry? No, oh, that's another one session later, never mind. Window <coughs> management. What's that, Bruce? Which one did you I've said window manager, because there's something that gets to be a struggle between Mac and Window, PC and, Win and Mac systems. That yeah. And isn't actually, quite as good as I'd like to. My implementations are not as good as I'd like them to be. It's really bad. Okay. So here's an example of, assuming it starts, oh, click on maybe Pro 10. Uh, there's, if you choose to, there's going to be two exercises that I'm offering for the group. Uh, one is actually going to be an exercise in window management. Uh, the other is debugging. Look at those two and see how we step through those. So here's an example of, and it's off the,